hey guys, now that I'm 45 years old, it's more important than ever to treat my body right so that I can play tennis in general, or especially play tennis on consecutive days because I just practiced for two hours in the Florida humidity. I'm absolutely drenched, I'm exhausted, and I have to go through a certain regimen because I'm playing again tomorrow in the morning. And if I don't do this regimen, I'm gonna be in trouble. I won't be able to play. I'm gonna be stiff on the court without energy and probably in pain. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I recover in tennis. And it starts off with static stretching. I do dynamic stretching before tennis, and I do static stretching after tennis. If you want to know dynamic stretching exercises, check out my video, how to warm up for tennis. But in any case, I have certain problem areas in my body. When I used to play, I used to get a lot of uh, calf strains. I used to get hamstring strains and especially the groin area was a big problem for me. Also, the ab area was another problem where I get a lot of pulled muscles there. So these are the areas that I pay close attention to. I make sure that I stretch those areas thoroughly after I play tennis. And it's okay to do it statically. I'm not a big fan of static stretching prior to tennis, simply because I've had bad experiences with static stretching prior to tennis, and I make sure I do this after I'm done playing. Now don't be afraid to sit on the ground on a yoga mat. I don't have one with me now. My mistake, I'm gonna get a little dirty here on the clay. But in any case, on the ground, there's certain exercises that you can do that are really, really good. The king of stretching is Novak Djokovic and this is one of the reasons why he's so flexible because of the amount of stretching that he does after every single practice after every single match so guys it is super important that the first thing that you do after you're done playing do a thorough static stretching regimen and guys one huge recovery mistake that I used to commit and this would drive my mom crazy was I used to lose a really frustrating match and I would go straight to the car and drive home all sweaty. And this is one of the worst things that you can do for your muscles is leave the sweaty clothes after tennis on your body. So you absolutely have to either take a shower, that's the best thing you can do, but you have to at least bring a change of clothes, multiple changes of clothes, because most likely you're gonna continue to sweat after a while. So you're gonna change out of your sweaty clothes, you're gonna put a fresh shirt on, and that fresh shirt is probably gonna be drenched after 20 minutes as well. So bring several sets of shirts and make sure that your clothes are dry after you're done playing tennis. And guys, now that I changed my clothes, I feel a lot better. I took everything off, even the socks. Everything is dry and I'm feeling good. Now the next step in the recovery is hydration. And it's super important in tennis to hydrate before your practice or your match, during the practice or the match, and after. And it's important to use electrolytes. Now what I use are natural electrolytes that's found in more expensive water, such as Evian. It has natural electrolytes, in other words, minerals. But another thing that I do is put a little bit of lemon juice in there because lemon is also very high in natural electrolytes. In other words, minerals. You can see there are little lemon chunks in this water. And so I'm gonna finish drinking this. I got another water in the car. I'm gonna make sure that I continue to hydrate. And guys, I told you that the sweating continues after the workout. Take a look at the way I'm sweating. I'm sweating like an absolute maniac. So this shirt right here is gonna be drenched in about 20 minutes. And that's why I say you gotta bring tons of shirts with you because even after you're done playing, you're gonna to continue to sweat and it's super important for your clothes to be dry. And guys, one of the most important things about recovery is ice so i prepared a couple of ice bags and i'm going to put ice on the places where it hurts most the worst problem areas for me are my ankle and my knee and so what ice helps with is inflammation and pain because my ankle does hurt a lot and so does my knee so put some ice on the problem areas after you play it helps tremendously with pain and inflammation so i'm gonna wrap up my knee and what I usually do is ice for about 20 minutes and I'm going to do this now I'll probably do it 
again later tonight, but it's, in my experience, uh, most important to do right after you play. After you stretched, after you uh, change your clothes, you ice the problem areas that you have, which is going to help tremendously with recovery. Guys, another shirt change. This is shirt number three. And now comes probably the most important part of recovery, which is nutrition. And the absolute best nutrition for tennis players is a starch-based diet. Okay, so I just got my food. And you're probably wondering, what is a starch-based diet? Where it's basically where you're eating the vast amount of your calories from starch. And starch is basically pasta, beans, rice, quinoa, bread. And that is historically the food that tennis players have always eaten. Now, I'll never forget an interview that I heard from Roger Federer. At Indian Wells, for some reason, he had to play a semifinal in the morning at 10 o'clock because he had gotten rained out the day before. And they asked him, Roger, what did you have for breakfast? He won that match. And Roger said, for breakfast, I had pasta. I'm gonna show you something super interesting. It's a picture of Novak Djokovic at the Olympics holding a plate of food and we're going to examine what the greatest player of all time was eating. And guys, for the purpose of the video, I'm not going to eat in the restaurant because they were playing loud music. I'm going to eat in the car and we're going to examine Novak Djokovic's food in a second, but I got my food at a place called Sweet Greens. This is a place that serves salads. It's kind of like a upscale Chipotle, one of those places. I'm going to show you in a second what I'm eating, but first let's examine Novak Djokovic's plate at the Olympics. So he has some pasta. Okay, that's a starch. This right here looks like rice. That's a starch. He's got some greens. It looks like this might be another form of starch. I know he's a vegan. This is for sure uh, not meat. I can't really make out exactly what this is. But you can see that the goat is fueling his system with starch. And for you guys that don't know, I've been a plant-based vegan for 11 years. My kings are Dr. Esselstyn and Dr. McDougall, who are proponents of a low-fat plant-based diet. And it turns out that tennis players have always relied on starch to fuel their bodies. See, tennis is a sport where you have to exert an enormous amount of energy, but also for a long time. So your glycogen levels have to be up and this is why tennis players eat starch because starch builds up your glycogen level and gives you a lot of energy for long periods of time so let's take a look now what i'm eating from sweet greens so here we have rice wild rice that is there's also sweet potato in there i can't seem to find it right now but i'm pretty sure that i ordered sweet potato which is in there so there's a sweet potato right here so we got Two starches so far. We got the wild rice, we got the sweet potato. We also have corn, which is another starch. And also, if you look closely, you will see there's black lentils here, okay? Black lentils, which is uh, another starch. So there's four starches. Of course, there's some greens, there's avocado, and there's a light dressing in here. So guys, this is an absolute powerhouse meal. I'm not gonna show myself eating because it's kind of disgusting. I will see you in the next part of my recovery, which is gonna be the active recovery. And guys, what I'm doing here is active recovery. Yes, I'm back hitting balls. And this is something that can help tremendously in recovery. You see a lot of professional players hit and practice after they've played long matches, four sets, five sets. I'll never forget Jim Courier would go for runs for several miles after playing five sets at the Australian Open. So. Don't overdo it, but active recovery is something that can help you tremendously to feel better the next day when you have to get back on the court. I'm gonna do it for about 10 minutes. Just hit some balls, hit some overhead, some serves, and make my body nice and loose. I'm not gonna overdo it. And this is gonna make me feel a lot better when I have to play tomorrow. A couple more serves. Oh. and a couple of volleys and I'm good. This is especially good guys if you play poorly to go come back out and practice a little bit more and get your rhythm back, get your feel back. This is a great thing to do even if you don't have to play the next day. 
after losing a tough match, get back out, hit some balls. Not only will this help you recover, but it'll also help you forget about the loss much faster. And some of you guys might have been wondering why I changed it to swim trunks. Well, I was getting ready for my hydrotherapy. Basically, hydrotherapy, in other words, just floating in water is a very relaxing thing. Number one, it can help you relax after a stressful match, but it can also ease tension in your muscles. Now you can do this in a pool or a jacuzzi, but just keep in mind that you shouldn't do any strenuous activities in water because the water does take a lot of energy out of you. So all you should do is just relax, float around and let your muscles loosen up. And I've been doing this a lot, almost on a daily basis. Thankfully, I have a pool at the complex where I live. And the reason why I'm doing it every day is because I was at the hairdresser recently. And as I was waiting for my turn, I talked to this older lady who was 98 years old. And I started talking to her and I asked her, what does she do for exercise? And she told me she goes swimming every single day. And she was in a fantastic shape, very thin, uh, very fit, and seemed to be mentally all there. So that was reason enough for doing hydrotherapy on a daily basis. Not only can this help you recover after a tough match, but it can also give you some general longevity. Wow. There's nothing more relaxing than what I'm doing right here. Before I explain what this is exactly, make sure you subscribe to the Intuitive Tennis YouTube channel and make sure that you like this video, okay? Don't forget. So basically what I'm doing here is an Epsom salt soaking solution. Wellness therapy with rosemary and mint, Epsom salt and essential oils, eases aches and soreness from muscle pains, helps promote healing and well-being, comforts relaxed tired and overworked muscles guys if you want to get yourself one of these dr teal's epsom salt solutions i'm going to put a link in the description and you can get yourself some epsom salt i can tell you that my ankle has improved tremendously since i started doing this on a daily basis and it was my mom who convinced me to do this i was skeptical at first but then i started doing it and i saw tremendous results my ankle has a problem with the tendon and it's very painful and there has been periods of time where I couldn't even walk. If you remember my video where I was imitating Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal, I remember that vividly. It was about a year ago and I could not walk even. I don't know how I recorded that video. I strapped my ankle up and then maybe a month later I had to pick my mom up from the airport and I couldn't walk at all. I was limping and then she came here. She suggested that I do these Epsom salt foot baths and I gotta tell you my ankle improved tremendously not only did the pain go away but I'm playing again I'm playing sets on a weekly basis And you don't have to soak your feet. You can take a bath with Epsom salt and kind of treat your whole body and let the Epsom salt work on all your muscles. So this is another form of hydrotherapy that I highly recommend. And guys, there's one more thing that you need to keep in mind when it comes to recovery. There's one thing that's the most important out of all of these things that I demonstrated in today's video, and that is sleep. I'm gonna quote the GOAT, Again, Roger Federer, they asked him in an interview how much he sleeps, and he said he sleeps 12 hours. This is something that I'm so jealous of because I probably average six hours a night. Most nights it's probably closer to five hours, and that's just simply not enough time for the body to recover, for the body to heal. The body recovers best when it's sleeping so this is one of the best things that you can do to be ready for the next match or the next practice is get a lot of sleep more than you normally get if you can try to get eight nine or ten hours you're going to play so much better the next day 